So the, uh, the, the guest tonight, uh, we met last night, uh, you know, he's a no-nonsense man. So he doesn't uh, accept an interview and he wants us to see. He said, hey, Master, then question is now, so let me hear it. And I said, well, I have only one question for you. The question is, why do you want to be president? He said, yeah, I like that. I like that. That I can deal with. Uh, and then he told me along the line something very interesting, which I, I'm setting up uh, tonight. He said, where are our patriotic songs? He wants the youth to connect to our patriotic song. So he's gotten some people to put it together. So we have put together one patriotic song for him. Uh, we'll put it for him with the montage. We'll look at it. But Honorable Kennedy, good evening. Welcome. Good evening. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. Hey, the pressure your people gave me. Oh, sh sorry. The pressure your people gave me today. Why? It wasn't easy. From yesterday, midnight, your son was texting me. Where is the flyer? I said, oh, the flyer will come tomorrow. <laughs> then today, text upon text and phone calls, then at some point, your campaign manager Kwame also called and said, look, we are going to cancel the program. I said, oh, but I saw Kennedy this morning at breakfast. He said, eh, but you are not bringing the flyer. So I know that your social media is quite effective. Why do you like the song? You know, um, thank you very much for asking this complete. question. It doesn't matter. Just do I this. like this song because it reminds me of where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I've got into where I will go. How does it yeah. what, what, are, what are the words in the song that? You know, whatever is happening in my life, I never even expected that this will happen. Somebody born in that village, actually in war and brought to a okay, it's okay, it's okay. going through hustling and everything in life, and where I am today. I think it resonates with the lady's song that uh, is like a dream. You know, so I always listen to the words carefully and I enjoy it. It reminds me of my youthful age, my background and everything. You know, I was born and bred into a poor home. Mm -hmm. I would say into the valley and I've crawled getting up on top. So everything is like a dream to me. Although it's through hard work, I still feel like it's a dream. Checking where my background and where I'm coming from. That's you why. Ask I, you say a Yeah, because it is indeed it's a dream. Or it's reality. Or it's Let's reality. take it one more. Mishira Nabe, Semini Nio, yeah, me when you have been called, is she run up in? You say, me any poor. I am a sad dias. Hey, me so me pitch at nothing. Send me in you. Yeah, me when you have been called, is she run up in? You say, me jelly poor. I am a sad dias. Hey, and don't see a big animal. Saya daya na miswa obinya ni mio. Saya daya obinya ni mio. Mi wunya mi ko. I am a sad daya si. Anunti obinya ni mio. Saya daya na miswa obinya ni mio. Saya daya obinya ni mio. Mi wunya mi ko. I am a sad daya si. And don't see me pitch at nothing. Send me in your mind. Yeah, me when you have me go. Is she run up? You say me Johnny Boy. I am a sad guy. And don't see a big enemy. Say a day and I miss one. A big enemy. Say a day. A big enemy. Yeah, they change your pussy. I am a sad guy. Open your nino. Say a day and I also open your nino. Say a day. Open your nino. Be with your big I am a sad guy. 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 I 
Okay, so the video that got corrupted is uh, it's ready now. Honorable Kennedy Japan was on the show here, I think last year or so. I was wearing a, a strange green suit. I really like that jacket. I don't know where it is these days. And I asked him, do you want to be president? That's what he said. Honorable Kennedy Japan has talked about if he's president, if he's president, does he want to be president? I don't. Uh, okay, at least you got the answer before you left. Uh, so you don't want to be president. I don't. There are wild rumors that you might I, be running for the MPP's flag bearer. I have said that you don't need to be president to effect change in people's lives. Mm -hmm. So whatever I'm doing in my own small. But you need way. power. You need MP. You need minister. You need that. You can you can do it better if you're um, a minister. I donated to 37. Not yes, because I was going to talk member, about. I'm a member of parliament. One hundred thousand dollars. It but you are the chairman you. of the I security. I donated all these PPEs, mm -hmm. not because I'm a member of parliament. So yes. get it straight. So I'm saying that you don't need only to be president to effect change in people's lives. I understand. Again, that. that also doesn't mean I, I'm not competent to do it. But do you, are, you, are you running for the MPP's flag bearership or you yeah, don't, or you don't know yet? Who said that? I oh, am that's not. Been rumors. Okay, so let me tell you the list of the rumors. It is um, okay. yourself, uh, and Ben Epson has conducted a research on this matter. Mm -hmm. you know that. It's yourself, Al Haji Muhammad Dubaumi, the vice mm -hmm. president, Mr. Alan Chamatin, the trade minister, mm -hmm. uh, recently added uh, Honorable Dr. Akoto Efri, Usu Efri Akoto, okay. the Greek minister, Joe Gatte. Okay. The uh, uh, minister for uh, former minister for railway, okay. and now I believe Honorable Asamoah Boateng, something like that. Okay, so I was with Asamoah Boateng. Asamoah Boateng wants to be chairman of the party. Okay, so he has so abandoned. And then Honorable Boache Jaco. Sorry, I left that out. Boache Jaco. Yeah. Okay, so that's the list that has been making the rounds. Mm -hmm. Are you telling us tonight that sh certainly you shouldn't be part of that list? You are not part of that list. I'm not interested in things that will destroy my party. Why would okay. that destroy? Why, would, why would you contest in the yeah, post destroy it's your too party? Early. They, we have not even finished forming government. Forming government, yes, that's true. And now, left and right, everybody is lobbying to be, you see, it's creating sharp division in the party. Already? Yes, and that is not what we need. That is not. So you may do it, but you won't say it now. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not interested. I've told you. But if, if, if we, your supporters, if we, your supporters... <laughs> you put, say what? If we, your supporters, we, your supporters, <laughs> okay. put pressure on you to, to do it, what happens? If you put pressure yeah, on we, you. Yeah, we, your supporters, we put pressure I, on you to I do it. I don't know. Hmm? I don't know. So you may do it. I'm not keen to do anything. I only want to make But you a have difference. not been a minister before. Yeah, Why do you think that you can do presidency? You've not been Excuse a minister. Excuse me, before. you know how many companies are run and the people are taking care That's of. not being minister. That's, That's not policy. Now, minister, I know your cuckoo, your mama, I don't know what you Please, I use my head to create money. If I want to be president, I'll be president in Stalo. In Stalo? But you've I never will, been vice you've never been I vice will, president before. I will whip you good. Upe, upe, fix the country. Yeah. Ah, in two years, what was he fixing Ghana? Ah, okay, so, so you, you have all this energy, you, are, you have all this energy, you have all this commitment, yet you don't want to run, and you are not telling us who you are supporting. Because you, you have supported Akufado all the way, we you know see, that. but I'm saying that definitely I'm going to support somebody, but it's too early, my brother. Who are you going to support? I, I won't tell you, I don't know Oh, yet. but you already know, or you don't know? I don't know yet. Should I run for it, for the MPP candidature? <laughs> Well, you are not a true and true party member, so I will not support you. <laughs> <laughs>
Right, all right. <laughs> all of them like the song. Yeah, they like the song. <clears throat> but the, there you were saying, I don't want to be president. Yes. That the party has not even formed the government. We got it. And then they are chasing, I, if I want to be president, I'll do it in style. But I don't want to be president. Yes. That was last uh, 2021. Yes. January 2023. Kennedy Japan is now leading the pack. Okay, hold it, hold it, hold it. I, 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 want, I want viewers to hold it. I'll come to this answer. But let's look at the montage we made for you with the patriotic song. And let's see how it looks like. Okay. The situation we are in, things are tough, no doubt about it, but it will promote tourism in Ghana. So let us think along those lines where we are going to make money and not only look at the amount here and say that is a crack. When you go to Dubai, when you go to South Africa, Cape Town, when you go to Brazil, Rio de Janeiro, just a people, Bahamas, Antigua, Trinidad and Tobago, all these countries are making money from the sea. What are we doing? Or not, you know, a FIPA, a woman, a boy, a punum. I'll be like Donald Trump. I'll build a long wall, both sides, so that nobody of Rinifia, not a cotton, a widow, not the Agu or Donum, not or Donum, so a tenico, a punum. No, we'll prevent it and clean the whole Odor River and put boats on it. I can't guarantee when we end the program tonight because we are now starting and it's past 10. Everybody is watching. Our social media is besting. New York, good evening. How are you? Uh, those of you who sent me the text that you've taken a two-hour break from work and you are on your phones and you are watching Kennedy Japan from America. That's how they call him. So, sir, all put together, why do you now want to be president? Why? Okay, the uh, answer is simple. And what I will say, I will quote the Bible where it says, there are times and seasons. Mm -hmm. I have always thought that I could effect change in people's life without necessarily being president. But I've come to realize that especially with the COVID and Russia and Ukraine war, I feel whatever pragmatic approach I have towards development. I should only be president so that a vision will come through and I'll be able to change the fortunes of this country. I have tried it in business fields. I employ a lot of people. 
But still, there are many young men and women, I'll call the youth, that are not working, which clearly indicates to me that being only a businessman, I cannot help this youth enough. But indeed, if I'm president, where I can express my vision, my views to everybody, and bring the whole country together to move this country, I believe there will be a great impact where young men and women will complete school and they will have jobs. So I said to myself, look, I've taken time when I was watching whatever played over. I said that it was too early because President Kufuado had just been sworn in mm -hmm. and people were taking sizes. That I want to be this, I want to be that. I wanted to help the government to be stabilized before I will come out and make any decision or whatever. But indeed, I wasn't interested. But now, I'm interested because I've seen that Ghana successive governments have done their part. When it comes to education, for instance, you see that most of our educational structures or whatever we put in place are just theory. We need abstract thinkers. We need pragmatic solutions to our problems. So when it comes to polytechnic, when I was traveling to America, for instance, you know, when I was going, we had polytechnics in this country. I came back and almost all the polytechnics have been turned into universities. That is a, a gap where you don't have the middle class technicians who can support engineers to build. Everybody calls himself engineer and sitting in the office. Whereas the base, in Germany, for instance, when you go, they call it Fako Schule. They train these artisans and they take over every installation. As an employer, I've come to realize that most of the graduates coming out of college are doing or come out with liberal arts, human resource, accounting, uh, what? Finance. Management, finance. When it comes to engineering, IT, you have very few people coming out. What, what you are saying is resonating with what the education minister is saying. Yes. He's been uh, talking about engineering a lot, Dr. Duchun. Yeah, STEM. Yes. He's been talking about science, a lot. Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Yes. Especially with engineering and technology. We are lacking. And maybe mathematics. Yes. Maths, okay, it is so, very so, easy so to... Honorable, you are asking for a structural change to our system. Precisely. And you have to be president to do that? Yes. Because I've been a member of parliament for 23 years. I've served on several committees and I've made several suggestions how to change our economy. And I believe that when we use pragmatic approach instead of reciting from chapter one to the end of the textbook and nothing comes out of it. We should do this, we should do that. I've made several suggestions and, and because I don't hold any position, an ordinary member of parliament. It didn't they, go anywhere. Yeah, it didn't go anywhere. They choose to accept it or not. Who is the day? I mean, the executives. The president and his team? No, not the president. President seldom come to parliament to engage with the exception of state of the nation. You mean the ministers? With the ministers. From Kwashiga's time, I suggested that I and my partner went to Holland with Yam. We experimented it, and they realized that the starch content in Yam is the same as the one in potatoes. So if they store potatoes for eight months, they can store yam for eight months. And ever since I went to, but my first committee was a great committee. Mm -hmm. So I suggested this. That look, minister, this is what we can do. One of my business is storage facilities. I keep telling them that look, why is it that Ghana imports fish to the tune of $240 million a year, whilst we have the same sea as Mauritania. Simple. 
The technology is simple, but we have ignored it. The technology is that you build a coastal with the blast freeze machines. What I mean by blast freeze is, is a lower temperature, very cold, at minus 40 degrees. Mm -hmm. When you catch the fish, you first store it in the blast freeze at minus 40 degrees. Then 24 hours, you move it into the cold room, minus 10. That meets uh, international standards so that you can export. But my brother, when you look at our coastline, these fishermen, they don't have any coal stores with blast freeze machines that when they catch the fresh fish, they can store them. I introduced this, I said this several times. And one of the agric guys at the ministry suggested that, oh, we can smoke the fish. I said, Jesus Christ, these are the guys who are leading this nation. Smoke fish? But yes. you need, you, if you're exporting, you need millions of pieces. Are you going to smoke all of them? Yeah, you know, but that, that was the answer that he gave me. I was shocked. I said, wow, we have a problem in this country. I had just come from America, so I do not understand them. How can you smoke fish and go and import fresh fish into this country? All these suggestions have been made. Another example is tourism. I dared tourism to give me or sell one of the castles to me, and let me show them how, how you can to do make it. Yeah. money Talk tourism out of from it. The, the castles are deplorable. Right. But they are very good historical. Yeah, that we can make a lot of money. Why didn't they give you one? Cape Coast, Elmina, Shama? Well, you know, I don't know. I cannot speak to that. So, so your, your decision to be president is also as a result of a bit of frustration of it's getting a, things done. Yeah, getting things done in this country. And that but, is but why. If, but, but Kennedy, where you sit, I mean, you're a very powerful person. You're number two to Kufo, you're a Kufo, those man, and you can't get things done. It may well be that maybe the things you want done are not as simple as you look at it. You see, there is nothing simple in the world. Mm -hmm. You need to challenge yourself. And anything that you put your mind to it, you'll be able to do it. That is what I want to inculcate into the youth of this country. That sky is the limit and therefore they should dream big. No myopic thinkers. Let's challenge ourselves. What any white man has done on earth, a black man can do it too. We've been in classrooms with white men. They were not extraordinary. But when they come out of college, because of their commitment to work, anything that they give them, they get involved, they religiously get involved and do it and get it done. But unfortunately, the black people, I don't know if it's inferiority complex or whatever, we are not able to, you know, do things for us to compete with the white people. So I think where I am today, look, I don't want to die with my vision. And the only way to let Ghanaians know that a black man, a Ghanaian, can also do it, is to vie for this presidency. And I stand for three things, patriotism, honesty, and discipline. Okay. I'll come back to that. So the conversation is just starting. And uh, 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 tonight we'll be asking Kennedy a Japan other questions. Uh, so the conversation is just starting right now. We'll be asking him about Ahmed Suwali, of course. We'll ask him that question. Who is Ahmed Suwali? Where is he? Why is he where he is? Does he know anything about us? We'll talk about that. Okay, we'll be asking him in terms of economic performance of uh, Nana Kufado and Kenoferata. Is it true that is Ukraine and uh, Russian war? Or are there... Other things that may have occasioned this one, we'll ask John, uh, I said, that's it, John Kennedy. We'll ask Kennedy that question uh, tonight. Honorable Ohini Kennedy Japan is our guest. We'll be asking him questions also about um, uh, sports. And he's already touched on tourism. We'll ask him about tourism. What does he think of sports? What does he think of tourism? And then we'll be talking to him about how we'll break the eight or care. And then we'll say, spend a, a bit of time on uh, what he thinks about President Mohammed's bid to be president again. So everything is just starting. Don't go anywhere. We have a commercial break, don't we? All right, we have a commercial break. So we take it now so that we don't lose it. And um, we'll be back after the break. Tell the people who were not watching that they've missed the first part, but the rest is yet to come.
You've been doing something on past person. You said the Ghanaian youth should stop going to church, should stop listening I, to pastors. I, um, I did not say that they shouldn't go to church. But I'm saying that they should limit the number of hours and days they spend mm -hmm. chanting You should limit the hours? Yes. So if I do that for five hours a week, is it too long? Yeah, you are dumb. If I do that five hours a week, how many hours should I do that? Five so hours a, a week. Five a hours day. a week. A week. Five hours. Five a week. hours. Yes, it's five. fine. So I, I, I five, five hours. So I did. I did. I did a little okay. bit of that last night. Till this morning. Oh, it doesn't yeah. mean anything. Oh, it means something. The day of Pentecost. Yes. We, we, when we are speaking in tongues, yeah. would your people here even understand what you are saying? No. And the day not. of Pentecost, mm -hmm. when they were speaking in tongues, or mm -hmm. say even some from Arabia, yeah, could hear their language. Yeah, sometimes you can understand. Good. And you are using sometimes. Yes. Because and there are two types of tongues. And right? what type of there's tongue? one that is for the edification of the soul. Uh -huh. That is preached by Apostle Paul. And there's uh -huh. one that is for interpretation. Uh -huh. The one that occurred on the Pentecost day that uh -huh. Peter talked about uh -huh. is the one for interpretation. Because uh -huh. it was prophesied and Prophet Joel uh -huh. had prophesied it earlier. So it was uh -huh. like a public show of something. Uh -huh. So that's the interpretation uh -huh. one. Beyond that, there's one that is for the edification of the soul. Because when you speak the, in tongues, you speak in mysteries. You speak in tongues is mysteries. Mystery ben, tongues now make cannot. A mystery ben. Um, Ghanians, say, you are watching a, 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 a you are mystery. very popular. That's why they mystery call it mystery. Ben. It's mystery. You speak it's mysteries. It's mystery to you. It, it will be mystery to me, but it will be for the edification of my soul. Good. So tell us your experience with, with, with tongues now. What kind of edification of your soul here? Tell Ghanians. <laughs> You know, okay. all I'm so, saying yes, is religion. that my brother, uh -huh. I believe in God. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that anybody who says there's no God, to me, mm -hmm. to me, is a fool. Yes, correct. Okay? I believe in God. But God has created us as a superior human being over all his creation. That's correct. Okay? So I'll give you the parable of the talent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The parable of the talent. When the rich man was traveling and gave... Talent, Some yeah. talents to... 5, 15, yeah. 10. Right. When he came back, the one who said he was afraid of him and hid the money, yeah. and he, he took it. Mm -hmm. he, All right, we'll start it. Uh, we're going to do one batch of text messages before we get into the rest of the story. But uh, I will start with the text messages, two important ones. One coming from the, uh, one of the groups in London. They say they are in Birmingham and they are watching together. They say, hang on a minute. I'm watching this show and it's very revealing how Kennedy answered the questions the first time. Okay, so in doing this, is he hurting the party now that he's contesting? Or what does it mean? Uh, University of Lincoln PhD research student is the one asking that. Maybe he didn't hear all. I'll let Kennedy answer it. But I have a revealing one from Imani Garnes, Franklin Kujo. And Franklin Kujo is also revealing something that can make a headline. He said he's never voted in 14 years. Okay, here it is. It says, I didn't realize how much of a force Kennedy was until he announced his intention to contest the flag bearership of the MPP. He makes very practically wise analysis without flowery, deceptive language. And his base and delegates can have more of him. I will be studying his bid for the highest office. He may. He just might earn my vote after 14 years of not having voted for any politician. That's Franklin Kujo of Imani Ghana. Well, Honorable Ohine Ejepon, uh, uh, you are making some waves. People who have not voted before say they may vote for you. All right, Mikael, let's take one each or two each from you and then let's move on. Yuri Joshua starting us off says, I am Kenergized. And uh, from Kobi Kotoku, he says, good evening, Paul. Thumbs up, always on point. Honorable Ken, I really believe in him, but please ask him, are the delegates going to vote for him for us? We're ready for him, but our fear is the delegates, because I only believe his disciplinarian attitude alone can change the country. Some of us want, some of us know what he can do. Thank you. Moving on. Okay, so Ibn Azafrimpon says, going forward, all delegates of the MPP must assess vividly the capabilities of Honorable Kennedy of Japan. I believe he is built to lead the party on our mission to break the eight. He is the general populace's favorite, and I vouch for him in this race, coming from Frimpon Ebenezer, the former TESCON president of the University of Ghana. Kweku Buedituffo says, the media team of Honorable Ken should use the just shown video as a campaign tool. The interview hasn't started yet, but we can feel his passion to change um, Ghana for the better. Over the years, things, having cha things have changed with Ken. 
and we know for sure that he's ready for the job. Lastly, from Ophobi Kofi, Honorable Ken is a very fine gentleman, a kind-hearted man of great wisdom. I love him to the core, and I wish he would be a running mate to Dr. Baumia, because no matter what, he is winning. Over to you, Karen. Okay, thank you. This one is from Kweku, but he says, this man has good implications of being the president of this state due to his superior ideas and how he often makes things look very impressive. This is a question to Ken. He says, Paul, let Honorable Ken tell us how NPP could ensure fairness and transparency in the forthcoming flag bearer elections of the party. Over to you. He's insisting that he's from Asin Fosu constituency. He says, please, please, Paul, we are all here in Asin Fosu watching. Please ask Kennedy, and please let him say yes. Is Kennedy ready to be the running mate of uh, Alhaji Baumia if he, Kennedy, comes second? If he doesn't want to be running mate, will he be ready to be trade or a great minister in future? All of those questions are coming up together with all the questions that we set up for Kennedy. Let's come to you. What do you have? Uh, should we go? Honorable Kennedy wants a pen. pen a pen and paper. Please get a pen and paper. Get a pen and paper. Uh, all right, they're getting a pen and paper for him. You can walk into the studio and put it on. You know, here yeah, we don't we break the rules, so you can always walk in and give it to him. No problem. Just be on camera. It's fine. We don't worry about that. <laughs> okay, so he got his pen and paper. Exchange rates, high inflation. High interest rates and inflation. That's a big story for right now as we are talking about individual debt uh, bond holders. Okay, so let's continue with the questions now that he's jotted them down. Honorable Kennedy Japan, let me come to you straight on economy. Has the Akufuado government, has this economy failed after 2020? Well, I want to be blunt. I know a lot of people will not like it, but... That's the situation. <clears throat> to be honest with you, whatever President Kufuado is going through with this Ghana's economy, I can say confidently that the whole world, governments are going through the same because of Russian Ukraine war, especially after the COVID. So if I always say that if we are voting today in the whole world, 80% of sitting governments will lose will lose in the sense that the hardships all over the world, the citizens cannot bear it and therefore is making every government unpopular. But I will also say that things probably, from hindsight, there are certain things we didn't do right that I think if we have done it differently, the economy would not have been this level to where we are today. Mm -hmm. Example is, I believe in practical things and creating jobs for the youth. Mm -hmm. What the program NAPCO, mm -hmm. NAPCO for instance, employed 100,000 graduates at 700 cities a month, meaning 700 million a month. And 700 million we could have established industries for these young men. You will not get 100,000 people working, but at least the sustainability would have been there, where young men and women, even if they are 20,000 out of 100, will have permanent jobs. Mm -hmm. OK, so from 2017 to date, if NACOP was spending 700 million, you multiply it by six, that would have been giving you about 400 and something, 4.2 billion. And my brother, 4.2 billion would have established a lot of industries here. And the ripple effect, those permanent workers, their family members, and everybody, you will see that, and taxes that we're going to get out of that. Although in the initial stages, there will be challenges because you need to build the industries. But in the long run, 
it would have been more beneficial than what we are going through. So I would say that, yes, by and large, there have been some mistakes that we've made that are not means worse. But the problem that every country is facing in the world, Ghana is not exceptional. And therefore, propagandas that go on every day, we have to be careful because it did happen under President Kufour's era where the first six, seven years it did marvelously well and the world crude oil prices went up from $59 to 147 in May 2008. Mm -hmm. Then July it went to 174. Prices went up, transportation, food, and Ghanaians did not forgive MPP. That time I warned them, I said, look, if you make a mistake and vote for NDC, and within six months, and Ghanaians were crying. After six months of NDC? Yes. So the same thing is happening. But I will not sit here and say that I'm an MPP and therefore all is well. All is not. But let me ask you something. MPP and NDC argue about this. MPP said John Mahama is incompetent. The incompetent one they called him. And then MPP came to power. Today, the NDC is also saying MPP is incompetent because of a particular denominator, IMF. John Mahama went to the IMF in 2013 or so. Kufuadu and uh, Kenoforiata have gone to the IMF after they inherited IMF, exited Ghana from the IMF. They've had to go back to the IMF. So the people are saying that if you are incompetent, I'm also incompetent. What is your analysis of this NDC IMF, MPP IMF? You see, when during the time that NDC went to IMF, I think in 2015, yeah. Okay. There was no global crisis or pandemic. Okay. Mm -hmm. There were no wars that affected the whole world's economy. So you could see that it was a complete mismanagement of the economy. I'm not holding brief for MPP, but at least they can lean on something and say that, look, the COVID. Let me take this opportunity. I'll be boldly and blunt and explain to you that most countries, a lot of people lost their jobs. Yes. They didn't have jobs. They were staying home. After COVID, during after and after COVID. COVID. Okay, some were given stipends to survive. Ghana, no worker in this country was asked to stay home. Government workers. Government workers. And they were paid. And they were paid. Even when they couldn't go to work. Right. And they didn't pay water bill and light bill. Right. You, you add it yourself. Mm -hmm. You know the performance mm -hmm. of MPP during the COVID. Mm -hmm. I'm not holding brief. We've done... We've made some mistakes that we all have to The man has been fortunate to succeed at a most for two years. Mm -hmm. He has been fortunate to go one term, which is four years, six years. Mm -hmm. And we saw what happened in this country. So what is he going to tell Ghanaians again? What is Mahama going to tell Ghanaians? He's telling Ghanaians that MPP is corrupt. MPP is corrupt. NDC is corrupt. That is why you have Kene Japan coming in. Kene Japan is MPP. I'm a disciplined MPP. But how, I stand how do we believe? How, be, how do we believe? And, and this, is a, this is a rhetorical question. Forgive me, I'm doing a devil's hand way. How do right. we believe that Kene Japan is not corrupt when you are so rich? In Ghana, you are rich, you are a thief. You see, I work hard. I was hawking on the street. I was born into a poor home. Like I said earlier. We, we hear these song. stories all the time. Let me tell you yeah. something. Mm -hmm. Born into a poor home, mm -hmm. hawking on the street, washing place in Germany, mm -hmm. driving taxi in America, mm -hmm. establishing business, and today, I'm here. 
I have something to show for, and that is unique. Unfortunately, in this country, you consider or perceive every businessman to be criminal. Yes, because he's given a minister bribe before. Most businessmen. Well, I don't give bribes. Have you given money if, to anybody who gave you a contract or something like yeah, that? Yeah, after, after, after everything, thank you. Christmas, maybe I'll give you something. Yes, fine. But I don't go and entice that take you, this and give me the yeah, contract. Yeah, take this and give me. You can check from everywhere. I won't do it. Is there corruption in Ghana? Corruption everywhere in the world. Are you corrupt? I'm not. Let me give you one example. I met an Indian last week. And he said there's a project that he thinks I can influence. Mm -hmm. The actual cost of the project, the estimate that they've given them, mm -hmm. is 26 million. Mm -hmm. Okay? The guy comes to say that he can do it for nine. The actual cost is nine. But of course, as a businessman, he has to make profit with whoever introduced them, three million, making 12. Then he said to me, I'm going to give you three million. <clears throat> so I'm going to, excuse me, I will add it to the 12 to make 15. And I said no to him. The Ghana first, I don't want the three million. If you know you can do the job for 12 million, so be it. The young man that came from America with their ticket and everything, whatever I want to do for them, yes. But me, I won't take any money. And the Indian man was there with his young engineer son, son who is an engineer. He said, wow, I have good goose pimples. I've worked in Africa for 22 years. I have never seen a black man reject $3 million like you. Why did you reject it? I rejected it because if you know the actual cost is nine, and you want to inflate it to three, uh, 15 and give me $3 million, at the expense of the poor people that have no good education, no drinking water, hell no. Joy FM did well last week by showing a school somewhere in the north, Pandai or so, yeah. kids that are lying on the floor. And I will go and take $3 million. No, I won't do it. Ghana first. Have you not done a government contract yourself before? I've executed done, exactly? I've executed several contracts. Did you add any money? Yeah, of course, as a businessman. For but yourself? My, yeah, for myself. Yeah, yeah I'm there. Well, I'm why, there. why did you add? You are a patriotic Ghanaian. But if you are patriotic, it doesn't mean I'm investing, say, $20 million in a project. Then you get $20 million back. How do you get $20 million? Back, yeah. So that's then how money. would your business... Stay? You see, what you need is the $20 million with everything, taxes and everything. Your margin should not be more than 30%. Of the so, $20 million. Yeah, so after paying say 15% taxes and everything. If your profit margin is 15%, you stay in business. And that's my principle. I will not go for... Um, a soldier came to me just this evening before coming here. And he's telling me a story why he's been removed from his position because they bring a figure and the actual amount to stand, they increase it to 200 and he challenges them now, he has a problem. You see, that is corruption. Yeah. And that is what I stand for. So the money that is shared before the business is the corruption. The one that is shared after the business is okay. No, the margin too. Oh, the margin. Yes. So you share it after the business, make sure the margin is not more than 30%. Yes. But if you know it's 200 and you go there, increase it to 500, my brother. That is not fair. So if I do a government contract, I execute a government contract of 500 cities, I am allowed to benefit 30% of the 500 cities. Right. Something like that. Right. Okay, With, so... Uh, and that includes, that includes all the taxes you are going to pay. Everything. So that I can yeah. stay in business. Right. So that you can stay in business. Mm, I see. Okay. You are still on Good Evening Ghana and it's live. We've just been doing the economy and uh, we did the IMF questions uh, that had... Okay. So if Ghanaians were voting... Why, is John, why should John Mahama not be an option? The fear of John Mahama coming to power is that, one, mm -hmm. John Mahama has not proven himself to be a good leader because he failed this country. So giving him another opportunity 
like when <laughs> when he went out of power, he was going around now telling people that he has learned his lesson. This man, from his track record, he needs only one term, four years. Even when he knew that if he manages the economy well, he will have another term opportunity. That he could not even do it. Now that he has only one term, God knows what this man is coming to do. If it is not greed. So I'm scared for Ghanaians that alternative is not good for us. Especially this message goes to MPP. That the alternative is not good for Ghana. And therefore, we have to be careful. And whatever decision we are going to take, we'll make sure we think of the country first. There, might be, there are challenges, not might. There are challenges. If the MDC didn't have John Mahama, but they had another candidate, it could be anyone, Spiel Gabra, uh, Dr. Dufo, Guzitan, or Kwesi Ahoy, would it make a difference? Yeah, they stand a better chance than Mahama. They, they stand a better chance with an unknown candidate. Yes. Who has not been president before. Yes. With President Mahama. Yes. In the minds of ordinary people. Yeah. Will we, people not be so frustrated with MPP and say that to hell with these people? Just, just anybody at all. Anyone. Anyone at all. So then John Mahama gets a collateral benefit from that. Yeah. It, you are on point. It's very, very true. That is why I'm cautioning my party people that, well, we have two years to make a difference again in society in terms of development. Mm -hmm. If we are able to do it, I think Ghanaians will give us another chance. To break the eight. Yeah. But you know, with me, we'll break the eight. With another candidate? With Kennedy Japan. We'll Without Kennedy Japan, can we break the Without eight? Without Kennedy Japan, well, it will be tough. When you yeah. say with Kennedy Japan, do you mean Kennedy Japan as number one on the ticket or number two on the ticket? Kennedy Japan, number one on the ticket, you can break the eight. Kennedy Japan, number two on the ticket? But, uh, tough. All right, this is still Good Evening Ghana, and, uh, and uh, my lady, I'm doing these interruptions for you so you understand uh, that we ended another part over there. We ended um, the uh, John Mahama question. That's what we just ended. Now, this is, this is getting interesting. Okay, uh, Kennedy Japan says that uh, he, he is the one uh, to break the eight for the NPP. Was a time now? Okay, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's 15, less than 15 minutes to the top of the hour at 11 o'clock. Okay. Now, let's go to the question about how he's going to solve that problem from the text message. Somebody asked, exchange rates, high inflation. Uh, I don't know whether he's going to say that his economic policies will solve it, but there's exchange rates issue, high inflation, uh, and then high interest rate. Okay. Are you concerned about this? I've heard you talk about yes. losing money uh, recently when yeah. the dollar crashed. I'm very, very much concerned so about as this. As president, are you thinking about that? Yes, of course. How are you going to achieve that? First of all, I'm a businessman. Just this morning, mm -hmm. I was watching TV, UTV, and it was announced that they have increased, got, uh, Bank of Ghana has increased the policy rate, policy rate by 1%, 100 basis points, mm -hmm. from 27% to 28%. Mm -hmm. That is ridiculous. Why? My brother, in this world, you see, most of industries that are uh, companies that are succeeding in this country are owned by foreigners. Why? The answer is that these foreigners take loans from their country at low rates as 5% to 7%. And they come here. Now, a local businessman like myself going for a loan to compete with an Indian company that produces this bottle of water. Mm -hmm. And I'm also going to produce this bottle of water. The Indian company came in with an interest from India exam. Right. Whether, wherever he comes from, with 5% interest on his loan. Now, if Ghana, the base rate is 28, the banks, the commercial banks, is hovering around 30 something. 40. Oh, it's already at 40. Yes. Meanwhile, it should have been plus two or minus two. Of the base, yes. Of the base. But no system is working. They don't trust the city. So everybody is giving any price that he wants. And interest rate is about 40. 
So how on earth am I going to compete with a company that took a loan with interest of 5% and I took a loan with interest of 42%? Whose product? These two examples here, although they are different shapes, is the same water. Yeah, same water. If an Indian is producing this at 10 cities and I'm producing this at 15, whose product will move faster? The Indian will move faster. Fine. So, yeah, but can Bank of Ghana isolate the people who are borrowing for industry purposes? Not everyone borrowing is borrowing for industry purposes. I don't know. Maybe, Maybe they should do that in terms of policy, that if you are borrowing strictly for industry purposes, it should be cheaper than, see, than borrowing what, for other things, uh, consumption and other things. Thank you for coming to that. I have an idea called the Asia Miracle. Mm -hmm. And the Asia Miracle is simple. If you really want to improve this economy, let's adapt the Asia miracles. Check mm -hmm. Korea and see. Mm -hmm. What they did was that, look, I know gentleman A mm -hmm. is into this industry, but he has financial constraint to expand his business. The government comes to you and says, look, if you want to produce this water, you are doing 10. We want you to do 1,000. What can we do for you? He said, we, we need... Equipment A, B, C. Korean government will not give you the money directly, but they will send it to the source, the manufacturer, mm -hmm. and pay for it. What the agreement they have with you is, you say within a year, you'll be able to finish the factory. The first four months or six months that you promised that the equipment will be in, the date that you gave them, when you have, say, 28. You gave the, the day 28. On the 30th of January, they are there to check if the equipment have arrived. They'll give you warning if it is not. The second time, they'll give you warning. The third time, they take over the factory or the company and give it to another person. But it will continue the production? Yes. Okay. Another person. Mm -hmm. To do it? To do it. By so doing, they were able to help their businesses to improve. Indigenous business. Yeah. And now they are very, very competitive. When you look at Hyundai and all those... Uh, but it's not the same that Alan Chamartin has been doing one district, one factory. It's not the same they did where they could feed Jews. It's not the same thing. Government gave them funding. And Government. now they could feed exporting. You see, what is happening? One district, one factory. Perfect. No doubt about it. But now, even today, my steel plant, I had to pay 2150000 to clear it because they've removed their exemption. And the furnace just arrived. And I had to pay 2160000 When the exchange rate was, uh, I say exchange, sorry, forgive me. Mm -hmm. When the waiver mm -hmm. was there, mm -hmm. I would have paid maybe one sixty. Now the river has been cancelled. Right, cancelled. So it shows the importance of the one district, one factory program. Mm -hmm. Now I'm coughing it. Assuming I don't have that money, the equipment will be sitting at the port. The mortgage will occur. So you everything. think one district, one factory, you will keep? Uh, yeah. You will keep that policy? Perfect. Mm. Perfect. But what we have to do to the one district, one factory is that anybody gets up with a dream that President Kufuadu says that one district, one factory. So I have a business plan. And from A to Z, he wants the government to fund it. I will do it. Show me the idea you have, the experience you have for government to give you so much money to go and do whatever you want to do. It's important. Because with that experience, if you go to small business administration in America, they ask all these questions. If you don't have any experience, I know what I'm talking about because a man has been coming to me severally to go to Exim Bank and speak to the boss and all those things. And whatever they gave him, he's still asking for capital. That, I'm afraid, won't work. What will work? I use a young man in my village that he was into poetry. Mm -hmm. or he's still into poetry. And he was producing 70 crates a day. 
He requested $1 million from Exim Bank. And Exim Bank gave him 1 million CDs. Today, this boy, every day, produces 560. From crates. 70? Yeah, from 70. As simple as go there. He's mm -hmm. there. And any time he brings me eggs, he open it, and it has two yolks in it. I don't know how he oh, does it. Oh, I see. Yes. One million. Such a boy, that is the Asia miracle. We need to help him expand. Okay? Not that one district, one factory, everybody comes, oh, I have my business plan. Then the whole government has to give you every person. Anything that you do not work hard for it, your heart is not there. The commitment is not there because the money is not yours. If you sweat and make money, you value it, you appreciate it. So if you go for a loan or government gives you assistance, you will not put it at the back of your mind that, oh, the money is not mine, so I'm going to spend it. So these are some of the approaches that I'm going to use. Let's talk about exchange rate. Mm -hmm. Exchange rate, whether we like it or not, what we need in this country is simple. This is what I call a syndrome in LA Middle School Economics. Let's our export exceed import. So everyone knows that. Everyone knows that. You see, I believe in pragmatic solutions. You know that. You have a nice suit this evening. You are importing rice. Yes. About $300 million a year. Tomatoes. When we have arable lands from Atebubu or Mampong, Ejura, all the way to Pusiga and Paga. That will take some time, wouldn't it? Because your competitor, Uzo Friyakoto, says that for the last, uh, since 2017, he has stopped the importation of maize because he's producing maize. Have okay. you heard that? If, if you stop importation of maize, it means what? Do you export maize? That we, at least we don't import. Yeah, I have a problem. You mm -hmm. see, you have to dream big. Mm -hmm. I have said several times that I will use the five northern regions, a from place, a crab place, to feed the whole Africa. Even my team sometimes disagree with me. Why do you need to be president to do that? Yeah, because as I speak, we have... Myself and my partner, we have farms at Atibubu Amantin. We've acquired 125,000 acres. We've cleared 30,000 acres. And we have a starch plant ready. And we have 960 people working. See, I made a statement some time ago, and people were being diabolic, saying that I said that anybody who lives in Accra and says that he has made money in Accra and he's going to go into farming is a fool. Because that agrarian style of farming, you lose your money. I also disagree that the minister was saying that graduates coming from university should go into farming. What type of farming? What inputs are you giving them? Okay? So if 90, uh, 44 years ago when my my brother-in-law married my cousin because he had two acres. Today, still, when you go to a dumping, two acres. That is why when you go to Cote d'Ivoire, a population of 21 million against 30 or 31 million in Ghana here, they produce over 2 million tons of cocoa, and Ghana is struggling to produce 800,000 tons. Why? It is because of agrarian style. The minister might have done well, but I have a problem. The problem is he did not think of long term. Because irrigation, we need irrigation. If you want to go into mechanized farming, first thing is irrigation, especially in the north this season. Look, I went there. One when village, I one dam by Dr. Baumia. Is, is, is doing very well. Is it? Yes. I was from Wa to Sola. Kaba, and I saw these village dams over there. It's doing well? It's doing well. One village, one dam is yes. working? Yes, yes, I've seen it. I won't lie. Not that I'm competing with them and therefore I'll come and... No, it's working. So we should congratulate Alaji Baumia for that? I don't have a problem with that. Will you congratulate him? Yeah, why not? Can you say it? If he's the one who brought 
one village wonder. But honestly, this is the first time you're telling me because I know how Akumsin was the one who was doing it. <laughs> so no problem. But if it's him, we give him credit. Okay. Why not? Mm -hmm. What I don't like about it, they are making propaganda that one district, uh, one, village. one village, one dam is not working. I saw it. I went to Northeast and uh, Naregu, I saw it. It's working. The problem we have is, you see, the difference between me and any other candidate is that the theory is too much. With the other I, candidates. Yes, I believe in pragmatism. You have done this. You have one village, one dam. No irrigation, no farms around those uh, dams. You see them just fetching water. To go and use at home. Yes, that's it. So what, what have you done? Use this to irrigate the land, especially this season. So that in South Africa, when I, I think Johannesburg to or whatever, you see the land. And the Ghanaian girls were telling me that 365 days, there's no shortage of corn or maize. In South Africa? Yes. And we can do the same here with these dams and irrigation. So anybody who says that Ghana is poor, I don't believe. Ghana, we are not poor. If we are poor, let's ask ourselves a question. Why foreigners have come to take over this economy? Why would they take a loan from their country and bring it into this country and make money? We are not poor. But our direction is completely wrong. And we don't blame only government. The individuals, as Ghanaians, if we want to improve this economy, we have to change the mindset of Ghanaians. That is why I said we should play that hero, heroic songs to conscientize Ghanaians to take their destiny into their own hands, believe in themselves. That is the way to move but this country. But if, if, if the young people see that one of the quickest ways to be rich is to be politician, so you start from university, you are teen and you are Tescon and all that. And before they see the guy they went to classroom with, he's deputy minister, he's got land cruiser, he's got this, that, that. He's got that and all have of you, that. Have you if they checked? see that, they feel that the political class is cheating them. And well, recently we've had some, some sort of revolution on social media calling on the middle class to rise up and all of that. Because they feel the political class is cheating them. You know, How do you see that? Well, they have every right to be angry, mm -hmm. no doubt about it. But what I want to tell them is that whatever is happening today, anybody who did not work hard for his wealth will definitely lose it one day. It's short-lived. What should they do with that advice? Is that an advice? Is it a question? Yeah, advice meaning... They think people have cheated them. Hold on. They shouldn't worry. Those hold people. on, hold on. You see... I have mentioned to you that I was hawking on the streets. Mm -hmm. Yes, P.K. Chocolate, Tatra, Nazareth, yes, Rome. You, you did that? Yes, In Kumasi or Accra? Accra here. Mm -hmm. to second, up to secondary form three. So when you were in so, Adel form one, you were doing Yes, that. I was hawking on the street. Yes, yes, P.K. Chocolate, Tatra, Nazareth, yes, Rome. But with no, you know, you know how to say it. Say it again, yes. Yeah, yes, P.K. Chocolate, chocolate, Tatra, Tatra. Nazareth, yes, Rob. What yes. is Nazareth? It's a blade, a type of blade with a crocodile. Ah, so, so PK, chocolate. Tatra. Tatra. Blade. Blade. Tatra blade. And ah. Nazareth blade. Nazareth blade. Yeah, and Rob. 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 Yeah, Rob. Yeah, Rob. So right. PK, chocolate. That. Uh -huh. Yeah, yes. Yes, PK, chocolate. Tatra, Nazareth. Yes, Rob. Okay, that's good for a TikTok video. Let's do it again. PK, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. PK. Yes, PK, chocolate. Tatra, Nazareth. Yes, Rob. Okay, we have the video. <laughs> okay. You see? Thank you very much. So if now, mm -hmm. this underdog mm -hmm. with persistence, mm -hmm. hard work, perseverance, now, that is why I love that song, M. Senda Yesu. Okay? From my background, where I'm coming from, and today, you are interviewing me as one of the aspirants. That alone is an achievement. Mm -hmm. So I stand for hope. Yes. Hope for the youth. And every hope needs action. Every hope needs action. Yeah, every hope needs action. Hope needs action. Mm -hmm. 
And today, the current situation we are in, we don't need change. Change needs us. Hey, these are heavy. Good. Hope that needs action. The current situation we have, we don't need change. change the change needs, needs us. us. What's the meaning of change needs yes. us? Because whatever we are doing, the situation is bad. But it is not you that need the change, the word change. The, the word change itself is looking for you. It's looking for you. Wow. Yes. That we have to dramatically change. Yes. From where we are to 360 yes. degrees. Yes, and that is what I stand for. That's Kennedy Japan can do that. Yes. And ideas, ideas needs spark. Mm. Ideas need spark. Yes. Wow. Ideas mm -hmm. needs spark. Mm -hmm. Hope needs what? Action. 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 Right. Where is the action in your hope that you're offering? Where is it? My action. Which is what? In the Employing hope is, people. When you look at me, that poor boy from Asini Dumpel today has over 7,000 workers. When you look at me, it gives you hope that look. Well, but do we have to go to America to become like on here in Japan from Asini Dumpel? Look. Because you, you went to America. That's yeah, where the thing it, changed. It does not mean, no. Where the change came from hawking on the street here. But you went to America. Yeah, I went to America. When, you know how many people that went to America? There are a lot of them. Right. But you see, I started this, I always said to myself that hmm, no matter what, I'm going to be rich one day. So when I was driving taxi, it took me seven months to own eight taxis. Because every month, I saved $3,000, went to auction and bought a car and gave it to somebody to drive for $40 a day. Mm -hmm. It's me. So it is not only America. I worked so hard in Germany. So it's you, the individual. You should be determined that you're going to succeed in life. Oh, you stayed in Germany as well? Yes. Before America or after America? Before America. Oh, Germany first, then America? Yeah, yeah Germany first, before America. Were you in Nuremberg? Hamburg. Oh, you're in Hamburg? Yes, mm, and Badodislo. I don't know that one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, after Arensburg, when you are going to Lübeck. So you speak a bit of German? And kill. A little. Go to Tag, go to Morgan. We get? We. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I say get means how are you? How are you? Then ah, you say good. Oh, I see. Good. Okay. All right. This is uh, still good evening, Ghana. We are getting into the home stretch right now. Kennedy Japan has been saying a lot of things. Hope needs action. Ideas need spark. And... Um, and uh, all, all the things he told us. Now we are going to... Uh, do we have a commercial break, my lady? Um, they will, they will I check. say mm. change needs you. Change needs you. Yeah. Hope needs action. Ideas need a spark. Yes. Okay. Do we have a commercial break? We do. So, okay. so Ghana, mm -hmm. change needs us. us. All right. And that's Kennedy, Japan. Yes. All right. So I'll take the commercial break. When we come back, I'll ask him questions about... Uh, Ahmed Swale, uh, what, what is the story with that? And then mm -hmm. I ask him questions about, uh, then we'll get to the gossip question. Did he tell President Akufado that he wants to run? What did President Akufado say? Has he told President Kufo uh, whether he's running and what did he say and all of that? Okay, the commercial break is not ready, so we go straight to the questions right now. Please, your text messages, start isolating them. I'll come to you. I'm sure we have a whole lot. Social media is buzzing. Thank you very much, social media, for your patronage. Who is Ahmed Swale? Well, you tell me. You brought the question up. Well, Ahmed Swale is a journalist we know. I never met him. He right. works for uh, Tiger Eye. Right. Um, he's an investigative journalist, undercover investigative journalist. It is reported that you, Kennedy Japan, put out Ahmed Swale's photographs to the world and even threatened that you would attack him if you found him. You see? Weeks later, Ahmed Swale was killed by gunmen. You see? Up till today, the police is yet to find out who killed the famous journalist. You see, you are a seasoned journalist. Mm -hmm. So please kindly don't distort information. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, he said within two weeks. No, within weeks. Within weeks. Of Check how many weeks. I don't know. Good, please, find out. Okay. And two, mm -hmm. don't say that Ahmed Swale was undercover journalist. Wasn't he? No, it means you don't even have analysis videos. I've seen them. Yeah. Did you see Ahmed Swale's face covered? I don't know him. But which, which role did he play? Right. Ahmed Swale was the one who was actually sitting by this fake attorney guy. Or oh, the interpreter of sorts. Right. He sits there. Oh, yeah, I know him. He's not, he's not that yeah. tall. No. Yeah. Oh, that's Swale. That's Swale. 
Did you see his face? No, no, his face was there. No. I saw him. So don't use that word. <laughs> but if his face was not covered, why did you find the need to show his photograph? Because most of the Ghanaians didn't know him. So why were you showing it to them? I, I was showing it because if a man comes to you and say that, take this, it's a gift. Let's use Kwasi Nyantechi, for example. Kwasi mm -hmm. Nyantechi was invited three consecutive times to Dubai. Mm -hmm. The first one, he went with the Liberian president. Oh, George Weah? Yes. Oh, you're they, serious? Yes. They stayed in a hotel. Anas and his group did not show up. Kwasi Nyantechi threatens to sue them. Are you? Uh, I'm getting confused. <laughs> yes. Kwasi Nyantechi went to Dubai on their invitation about yes. the sponsorship of the league. Yes. Okay. He went there mm -hmm. with Oponwea. What was Oponwea doing there? Well, he was contesting. For presidency. Right. So what was he doing there? They're going there thinking, well, the way they portray Sheikh Atani and the rest. He has money. Yeah, he has money. So Kwasi went with him. To raise and, funding for George Weah. Right. And he didn't show up. They didn't show up at all? No. So he was threatening to go and see them. Sue them. Mm -hmm. That was the first time Anas introduced himself. Pleading with Kwasi Nyantechi. Oh, that dog. Yeah. Himself as Anas. Yes. That oh. So Kwasi saw him. Yeah. And they, they spoke. Yeah. So this is, you know, my boys, this and that. I'm sorry. You're going to hate. So you saw the video that they were sitting there. Anas was not there. Ahmed Swale was there. Mm -hmm. So, to show his face, and let me clear this air. When I showed the video on net two, my workers came to the studio and told me, ah, I'm Rambo. They asked the question, don't you know this guy? I said, no. I said, oh, but he was one of the guys who paid his school fees. I said, I don't remember. I always pay people's school fees. He said, ah, he came here, he said, he was going to university. You gave him 1,500. I said, I don't remember. And he said, oh, he has been coming here. And I said, please. He's very dangerous. Don't allow him to come here. He will set us up. So when he comes, beat him up. Throw him out of the place. Beat him up. Yes, this is what I said. I will not lie to you. But that's not a bad word. Like, that's not a good word, sorry. Well, but you see, judges who have died, judges who have been sacked from their job, custom officers, with an style, I have a problem with that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because it's complete entrapment. Oh, those judges who, yeah. yeah. Yes, complete entrapment. Mm -hmm. So to show somebody's face and say that you are coming to trap me, and you are using that word fairness, is he also fair? To all those people. But then he was, he, he, was, he was murdered, which is also very bad. You see, Ghana, mm -hmm. media, with all due respect to you, you also have a problem. The problem is, when an incident happens like this, you sensationalize it, and attention is taken away from the corporates. First of all, let me ask a few questions, security-wise. I ask, at what time did Anas hear that Ameswale has been murdered? Mm -hmm. At what time did Anas put on social media that Ameswale has been murdered? Had he visited Ameswale's family even to see the dead body? At what time did Anas get the chance to call? to call the uh, Atlanta, Georgia senator and mm -hmm. complain that I have killed him. You see, all these questions I'm asking, journalists did not even listen. Because that time, you perceived Anas as thing God, and therefore, you didn't give anybody benefit of the doubt. What was the significance of these questions you're asking? The significance of these questions is that if you are doing investigations. Go and watch ID. Mm -hmm. Family, husband and wife. If they come and the wife is murdered, the first suspect is the husband. If a husband is murdered, the first suspect is the wife. Okay? 
Then they begin to extend it to their close associates. All these things were not done. And because I showed his pictures, you are accusing me. Get it straight. You don't know. Now, let me tell you. Anas reported me to U.S. government. When I got to Houston, they stopped me for about seven hours. Okay? They did the investigation, everything. They said, go. Okay? Now, I believe in police. Here. Competent police. All these investigations that they've done, nothing pointed to Kenya Japan. Are you saying they are not competent? What I would do if I'm president, I will encourage the police, the security agencies, to go and investigate it to the battle, okay, to get the actual corporate. But you are suspicious that Anas himself may be part of it? Yeah, because of his reaction. Because he didn't show remorse, anything. Somebody, uh, your, 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 <laughs> I don't know the word. I wouldn't say confidant. I wouldn't say that. But you let me reserve the okay. word. It's, it's, it's a very touchy and emotional issue. So let's, you know, let, let's, let's move on. Let's move on to the gossip part. Or shall I take some text message from you? Oh, you have something to say. It looks like you want to add something uh, to this Swale conversation. I'm ending it here. No, I, I wanted to tell you that uh, if I'm elected today, whether the case is dead or not, I will bring it back again. So that Let, we can find the man. Yes, so that we can find it. Whilst the way, because of the last thing you said, I need to extend this conversation because another matter in which your name is also mentioned, uh, I don't know whether it's related, I think it's unrelated, is J.B. Dunquist's murder. There again, they have said that you were the first person to arrive there. Who was the first person to arrive there? What about the police? When yeah. I went there, mm -hmm. when I went there, I saw the wife's sister, yes. who was my clerk. Mm -hmm. The communications committee. From parliament, yes, yes. I saw police officers there mm -hmm. in the house. Mm -hmm. I saw JB's brother also there. Mm -hmm. There are three police officers who always patrol around my area in East Legon. First call, around 4.30 a.m., I was complaining, ah, at this hour, who is calling me? Apparently, he was on the line. Then he said, oh, honorable, one of your colleagues has been murdered. I said, oh, who? Then he said, JB. So I asked, where does he live? Then he gave me direction. Oh, he didn't know where he lived? No. I didn't know. So they gave me direction to the place. Oh, that's how you showed up there? Yes. Yeah. I they see. gave me direction. My wife is a witness. I was there with her when they called me. And the police officers are still here. You know? So how come? And first of all, JB was not a close friend, but we are colleagues in parliament. I had nothing against him. So what will, will happen? Why will I do such a thing? And let me tell you, I have that human touch. I don't have time to go and kill human beings. What would I gain from that? What would I gain, my brother? How long so am as I president, we, we demand from you Resolution of two murders. You say that you're going to resolve Ahmed Swale's murder yes. and J.B. Dunquist's murder. Yes. You resolve it as yes. president. Yes. What power will you have to do it? You see, the problem is, if the president shows interest, the police will work. And I will show interest. I will show interest because it's me that I've been accused. So it's important to exonerate myself come out with the truth. That is all. Okay. When I interviewed uh, Alan Che Martin last week here, he said that uh, whereas it's, it's a new thing, there's a novel thing for the MPP to want to break the eight, it is also new for John Mahama, who wants to return as former president. Right. And so much as the MPP needs to do a lot of work to be able to change the status quo and break the eight, John Dramani Mahama must also do a huge amount of work to convince Ghanaians that a former president can be re-elected. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I agree. Mm. I agree with that. Because, you see, the cycle is such that every eight years, at least what we know, we change governments. Mm. So, 
and the MPP admitting that we should break the eight means that our back is on the wall. Yes. Because of the eight years. Mm -hmm. But this time we want to make a record. Instead of eight, we we'll go to 12. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, because we want to break the eight, there are certain things we have to do. And I think I just read something here that and Furiata now is saying that the private bonds will not be touched. Yeah. We thank God. If not, we are going to lose miserably. The election? Yes. On the individual bondholders? Yes. Yes. We are going to lose miserably. It's good he has made a U-turn. Hmm. You see? So, with what is going on in the world... It doesn't favor MPP. Mm -hmm. But the unfortunate thing for NDC is also that they've been in power before and they were not good managers. That is why you need a businessman now. And that is Kenya Japan for you. You need a selfless leader. Mm -hmm. You need a leader who cares about the future of the country. You need a leader who places Ghana first. And these guys, or these gentlemen, I will stand tall because I will show all my track record, what I've done for this country as a member of parliament and not a minister. Not even a minister. What I've done. My record will speak for me. Somebody was asking when we put out this uh, earlier today that, um, okay, uh, that was a question on uh, Alan Chermatin uh, talking about John Mahama needs to break something. The Alan Chermatin, that has ended now. Um, uh, somebody uh, said that Kennedy is great. Uh, he's very well exposed, and so he's marking you and the other candidates. Exposure, Kennedy tops everyone. Um, articulates, carrying the narrative, Kennedy tops everyone. And then he says that wealth, perhaps of individual wealth of all the candidates, most likely Kennedy is the richest among them. On policy, Kennedy is not first, he's not second, he's not third. Policy? Policy. Has he, has he ever given me a chance or has he heard what I'm going to do? Well, what you're going to do is the future, but in terms of record of policy. Record which of policy, policy have you? You have not been a minister before. You've not been a deputy. But you can't say that as minister of Agri, I did this. Also, if he says as minister of Agri, mm -hmm. from 2017, I've stopped the importation of. Don't bees. forget, I've been. Alan Chamartin says as minister, one district, one factory. PSI. Have, have Public been, Japan says presidential spokesperson. I did that. Joe Gatte says railway minister, attorney general. I did. That. Canada, Japan can't say anything. I can say a lot. First of all. Mm -hmm. For being a member of parliament for six consecutive terms, mm -hmm. it's a great achievement. Coming from NDC constituency. Oh, that was NDC before? Yes. You were the first to win for yes. NDC? Yes. And you've held it for and six terms? And held it for six consecutive terms. Oh, that's clearly flipping a constituency to the MPP. Clearly. Right. right. Yeah. Currently, I'm the chairman of Defense and Interior Committee. Mm -hmm. I've been the chairman of Local Government Committee. Mm -hmm. I've been a chairman of communication committee. Mm -hmm. Go and ask all members of this committee my performance. Mm. Yes, go and ask. And again, the person is talking of wealth. It's not wealth that we're talking about here. The employment that I have created in this country. None, none of the candidates, MPP, NDC, none of the candidates. When they come, ask them, how many of the candidates from NPP and NDC have employed even 1,000 workers? And do you think you need, what, a professor to create jobs? That is why I'm saying that I believe in conceptual thinking. But as president, there's a lot more for you to do, not just this. The president's desk is full. You see how big the table is? The, it's the full. table. You're doing ECOWAS, you're doing foreign affairs, you're doing all, Africa, all you you're doing is, continental you see, free trade. I'm going to ask you about you. that. We need very easy to run this country. One, one policy of mine will change everything. Which is? Discipline. Discipline will change this country. Law and order. That is all we need. We don't need professor whatever. So discipline from the top. 
Everywhere, every Ghanaian has to be disciplined. You see, you are talking of the top. Yes, it starts from the top. I will discipline myself. And therefore, it will be easier for me to check my ministers. It will be easier for the ministers to check their directors because they know what the president stands for. Okay, I have a set of questions for you. I'll take the text messages before then. But just let me just ask you, will you make more money as president? At this point in my life, I don't need to make money. I want to make a difference in society. I've said it before, I'm saying it again, that if I'm elected as president, the presidential salary and whatever money I'm going to make, I'll put it in an escrow and set up a presidential scholarship and touch every constituency with my salary. Every constituency, a child will be given scholarship to go to university. On the present salary? On the present 275 constituencies? Yes. You won't finish that. 12, uh, how many? Four years, how many uh, Let me tell you. 12 times 4, let 48. Me tell, let me tell yeah. you. If, if I make 100,000 CDs, CDs per month. Hypothetically. On all your everything. Right, on mm -hmm. all uh, everything. 100,000. In 12 months, it's 1.2 million. Mm -hmm. 1.2 million, 275 constituencies. Mm -hmm. Every child will get 3,000. Do your calculation. Yeah, you can do that. That works. Yeah. That works. So 275 constituencies. I'll give 3,000 CDs. Will, you be, will you be interested in government contracts? Will you, if I come to you, you are president, I say, I come, Kennedy, the Ministry of Communication is doing a big 5G project. I have some partners. I can, can you talk to the minister for me? Will you do that? Uh, you see, you have to put your... Documents, yeah, I'll show your you. proposal. That I have, I have partners from Sweden and see. all that. Please tell the minister that they you should see, favor Paul Adumotri for you, this contract. Would you, you see, do that? You see, your partnership with Swedish doesn't intimidate me. I know. I know, it, I know, I know you should that. prove mm -hmm. that you're competent to do the job. Well, but if I have partners, but you can see, do it. But you see, what I will do is introducing you to the minister, but not push or force the minister to give you the contract. No, but that's all I need. I don't push. Just tell the minister. Just, just say that. The minister will to please have a look at Paul. That's all I need. Yeah, I just know. look at that. Is, not is that corruption. corruption? No, that is not corruption. Really? But no. I, I've taken my ad advantage of knowing you and coming to you as president. If, if you do anything wrong, contrary to whatever you, your proposal is, you go to jail. You tell the attorney general to, to work on me. Yeah. So you if I come to you in that place, I say, oh, but uh, Kennedy, me and you, I'm me and you are. I'm afraid. afraid. Oh. I'm afraid you go to jail. Really? Yes. So if no like, favor for anyone. Don't vote for me. You go to jail. No favor for anyone. No favor. I will jail you. You can't do president like that in Africa. Why not? Let me give you an example. You see, you sit here as a black man you with see a what nice... Donald, is it Donald Trump's problem? Every day what, he was sacking somebody. Problem? Hold on. Hold on. Mm -hmm. This morning, yeah. Tennessee. Uh -huh. In America. Right. In America. Three fire officers were fired. Mm -hmm. Just for late response. Late. Oh, I see. Three. They've been fired. Yes. What has a, a fire officer got to do with a murder by police officers? But it's a late arrival. Precisely. That is how the that, system... That's discipline. Discipline. That's how systems work. Ghanaians, that is why I'm saying that change needs us. Change needs us. Because everything happening in this country clearly indicates that we are in discipline. These same Guineans, when they travel abroad and working, and the systems are working, they follow the systems. These same workers sometimes become the best workers. Yeah, so people. it's for you, the, the political workers. leader, to change the system. Yes, of it's course. It's not the people, it's the system. It's the system. Led and by the leader. Yes. Okay. So you yes. are promising us that you're going to show us that this is the system you are bringing, everybody must fall in line. Yeah, we have to. Okay. And it has been experimented elsewhere. Like example that I'm giving you that three fire officers where, yeah, who fired. were late were just fired. Okay, let me uh, take the text message. When I come back, uh, viewers, so that you don't go away, we're asking about religion and the contest. Is religion important in the contest? The survey I showed you, uh, the delegates had been asked about religion. I asked him also gossip questions. Did he tell President Akufado that uh, he wants to run and what did President Akufado say? Who will be his running mate if he wins? Is he happy to be running mate to somebody else if he doesn't win? All of these coming up. Let's just take the text messages now. Mikael, and uh, we are now on social media only. Uh, thanks for keeping with us. On endorsement of gay rights, will his government grant their rights legally? 
Now, uh, Victor Usu from Kumasi says, Good evening, Kennedy or Henia Jipong. If you get the nod, please, are you going to work with the same NPP ministers and members who have been tagged as corrupt? Now, uh, this is from Sly. He says, Kindly ask Honorable Ken what he will do about the rent issues in this country should he become president. Because you will see house owners charging two years advance, which is very, very bad. Moving on. Okay, so, um, these are the wise words from Honorable Ken. Every hope needs action, change needs art, as ideas need spark. Kennedy in Japan 2023, and this is coming from Philip Darko. Also, people have put out the content for our TikTok videos. They said, yes, PK, Chuckley, Tatra, Naziet, yes, Rob. Coming from John Gary, he says, per my observation, Honorable Kennedy is quite better than all the leaders in Ghana. He has employed over 7,700 Ghanaian youth in his company. How many leaders in Ghana here are able to employ 5,000 youth into their companies? Please, I advise we should all pray for this man. Rafiat Hussein Gunu says, Ken's analysis on the economy is interesting. He has put out a strong defense of his government's project. That is remarkable. He didn't run down his own government as MP and not as a minister. Mustafa Ibrahim says, this is practical knowledge. Honorable, you are a good leader and you deserve to lead the country. You are making a lot of sense and people don't know how to manage businesses. Bretunu Anupon Butcher says, from Asin Prasu to Asin Yankumase and all Asin towns on Branch Road, this is our own, so let us all rally behind him, Asin to the world. And lastly, from Kwesi Entribosia Kopal, now we have a business-minded person who is ready to handle the affairs of this country as he runs his personal businesses. No wastages at all. Ken, Ghana is ready for you, and I will urge all the delegates to vote for PhD 2024. Over to you, Karen. Okay, thank you. This is from Joyce. He says, I agree with you, Mr. Japan. Ghana is even importing onions from Burkina Faso. Raphael says, please ask him of his view and how he's going to change or handle Galam say. Ken, analysis on the economy is interesting. He has put out a strong defense on his government project. That's a remarkable. He didn't run his own government as MP and not as minister. This is from Rihad Hussein. This is deep. Hope needs action. This is from Kwame Nipa Mure. Noble Ken says, hope needs action. The situation we are in, we don't need change. Chain needs us. Hon Ken, good job. Over to you. Thank you, Karen. Um, this is from Akwesi Sapon. Let's just vote for this man. Amposa Kwame Gideon says, I said to myself, I will never vote again for the, for for I will never vote again. But for business for a businessman like Ken, I will vote again because Ghana can work again. Please kindly ask the most honest man in this politics, Honorable Kennedy Akompreko, whom I see him as the second coming of the late president, His Excellency Jerry John Rawlings. His takes about President Akufuado's leadership leadership style of not doing reshuffling on his ministers and CEOs for almost seven years. And if he is the president of this administration, would he have to reshuffle? This is from um, Aponsa Kwaku. And from Ebenezer Fosu, he says, he's just an honest man. Um, Kwejo Samuel says, Honorable Kennedy, a Japan is incomparable. Ken all the way, no challenger. <laughs> um, Okay, we don't have much time. Let me take that question on reshuffle. It's very important. Reshuffle. If you were president, will you be reshuffling frequently, periodically, or? You see, reshuffle serves as a deterrent to lazy ministers. Mm -hmm. Okay? So sometimes, if the people don't do, your ministers mm -hmm. are not working, okay, or they are not up to tax, why not? You have to re relieve him of his position. But if they have to tax? Yeah, you keep them. So you, if, if they have to tax, you, you can, we can find ourselves in a situation where you will keep your ministers for six years? You know, six years is too long. What I'll do is, if you are competent and you've changed a ministry, I'll move you to another ministry to make a change or difference over there. I see. That, that will be the way. Yeah. Looking at what is happening, do you, can you look at the cabinet and say, is there a, a minister who is doing well that has caught your eye? 
Hmm. I have a couple of ministers that are doing well. Yes, tell yeah, us some of them. They are doing well. Mm, tell us some of them. Uh, Attorney General is one. Godfrey Dame. Yeah. Oh, that's on a disco connection, by the way. Uh, is it, is Napo, it a disco? Napo. Is Napo also, of Energy. Yeah, it's also one. They are, they are impressing you? Yeah, you know. Are you looking at them for running mate? No. But I don't have any intention of taking anybody now until I get the nod. So you're not thinking of anybody? Not yet. If you win, must the person be from the north? I don't know yet. Could you have a running mate from the south? South, south tickets? It can be possible. Really? Yeah. I see. Hmm. All right. Now let's come to the gossip questions. Have you told President Akufado you're running for president? Uh, is it part of the... Uh, <laughs> it is part. It is part. It's the gossip part. Well, we always do the gossip part. Have you told we've him? Met. We've met. The, is that, the question is not answered. Have you told him? Yes. Was he happy that you're running? Oh, initially, but he, he's, he's okay with it now. Is he supporting you? I don't know. Have he's, you asked for his been, support? Not yet. I want them to be neutral. Did you tell the chief of staff that you're running? Honorable no. Fremont Parry. No. But she has heard? Yeah. Has she asked you? Not yet. You won't go and tell her? I don't know yet. Have you told the chief at Tassim Fosu that you are running? Not yet. When will you tell them? You know, I'm a grassroots man. Mm -hmm. So I want to deal with the grassroots first. And their response. When I know I'm a formidable candidate, then the first person I'll go to him is President Kufu. Mm -hmm. Second, I'll go to Tumfo. Third, I'll go to Central Regional House of Chiefs and inform them of my intention. What I'm doing when will is... you do all that? Right now, what are you doing? Right now, what I'm doing is I've introduced myself to the region and the constituencies. Now, I'm going to the grassroots. I'll go there personally to speak to them, show them my contribution to the party and my achievements in this country why although MPP is becoming unpopular but still there's one candidate that Ghanaians are willing to give him a chance mm, I see yes. so that's a plan that's a plan for, yes. the, for the campaign right so so people who say that you are into this just so that you step down yeah should they be looking somewhere else they are dreamers you are in for the long haul. Oh, yes. I'm going to the end. All the way to Congress Day. And I will leave no stone on 10. When is the voting going to occur? I don't know yet. Maybe Thursday they will come up with a decision. Mm, oh, they're having their meeting on Thursday. Right. Mm. So I'm, I'm contesting. That's interesting. Yeah. If you don't win, you come second and Dr. Baumia wins, will you agree to be his running mate? I will support him as an MPP member. Mm -hmm. I will support him campaign. If he asks you to be his running but mate. But I don't want to be his running mate. What do you want to be if you don't win? If I don't win, I'm a party member. I'll help. You will lead the campaign or you just help? I'll help. You know, I'll go, how am I going to lead the campaign? Every candidate has his own team that is a, but I'll go around and campaign. Yeah, but if the party thinks because you came second, you should be running mate. Bush and Reagan did that, and they won three times. But these same people that are saying this. Now, I'm sorry. You push me to the wall. Some people always say that, oh, Kenny Japan doesn't know when to talk and when to stop. You but, are pushing but if you me. want to say something that you shouldn't say, then don't say it. Yeah, because I don't <laughs> so, want to say anything. No, don't say it, please. If it's something you shouldn't say, don't say it. When you, we close, then you tell me. You, you know where you, <laughs> your, your support is. So, <laughs> you just push me. You know? I refuse to answer. <laughs> That's very interesting. <laughs> Who is your favorite lady, either among MPP ministers or Council of State or older women in Ghana? Who's your favorite lady? I'm looking for a, a gender ticket for you. I've not taken a look at that, mm. honestly. You see, now but, my But you focus, talk about Asla Usu in a way that I know you have a good rapport. My focus now... Mm -hmm is to emerge as a flag bearer before I think of whoever. Will religion be important in the decision of Ghanaians, the 2024 December decision? Will religion be important? Well, I think so. But we have never in the Fourth Republic had any election where religion was important. 
in 2008, for instance, John Mahama and Professor Mills gained more Muslim votes than Dr. Baumia and Akufuado. Yeah. So, so religion has never really been, in any of the elections we've run, very important. Why would it be important in this one? I don't know. But when you listen to people, the way they argue and everything, I'm not for that. So I'm not happy that I'm this, I'm that. I believe in competence. And I know for sure that the state of the economy, the state of the world economy, we need pragmatic leaders now. Mm -hmm. And I stand tall. And that is what I'm focusing on. Outside Ghana, who is your most favorite African president? Rwanda. Oh, Kigami. Yes. Oh, that's the kind of leadership we should expect. Yes. The Kigami leadership. Yeah, discipline. Sometimes it's brutal. Well, too bad. If that's what will change Ghanaians. Sometimes he abuses human rights. Well, you see, the same person saying that he abuses human rights, immediately he leaves the scene. Then he's proud to say that he's from Rwanda. Oh, I see. Yeah. When Rwandese travel, they're happy to say they're yeah. from Rwanda. Yeah. Because you that. get respect. Right. Arsenal Football Club have only just a visit to Rwanda. See, why didn't they say Ghana? We haven't asked them to say. And we don't have the money. As we are ending, let's go to entertainment and sports. What were you doing at Afrochella? You're a 60-something-year-old man. You were at Afrochella and Shatawale, of all people, was introducing you, you know, to come Afro, and sing. Afrochella was organized by my son, my nephew, and their partners. Okay. And ever since they did that, I've never attended. Okay. Although, financially, when they need help, <laughs> they come to me. They always come last minute. Mm -hmm. When they get disappointed, they come I loan them. But they've been good to pay. They pay back. Okay. So this time, they said I should come. But when I went there, you know, these young men and women smoking, drinking, and they, I was not comfortable. I really wanted to leave. But Shatawali said, I'm his godfather. He wanted to introduce me. I said, for what? I said, okay, let me wait. So as soon as he did that, I left. But it was a nice scene. What I saw there encourages me to believe in tourism. The tourism. When we talk, you know, I thought you were going to ask about developmental policies. Yeah. And I believe in tourism. Tourism, these young men rented almost all the hotels in Accra. Oh, yes, oh, yes. was massive. massive right. Massive. What does that tell they you? They sold tables for $8,000 in Ghana. See? And it was oversold. Right. When yeah, President Kufuade in 2019 introduced the year of year return, of return mm -hmm. from October to January 2020, Ghana made about $2 billion. From tourism? from tourism. That is October, November, December, January. Four months. Meanwhile, Ghana Coco, this last year, we were going for a syndicated loan of 1 billion 130 million mm -hmm. for a whole year. But tourism, these young men, what they did, including Afro Nation. Yes. And Ghana is on the map. Big time. Right. That is the encouragement I got from the scene. When I got there, I said, wow, we need to encourage them to do this more. Since March, any occasion, Independence Day, whatever, you know, we organize something. And now they're getting contracts from South Africa, Cote d'Ivoire, mm -hmm. and the rest to replicate it. Wow. Why, can't, why can't we? So tourism, tourism is one of your big... big Number agenda. one. Okay. The biggest ministry will be tourism. And trade. But trade. really tourism. Yeah, tourism, Agri agriculture. Agric, mm -hmm. Yes. Tourism, agri. And defense and interior? No. Defense and interior, no. Education. Education, yeah. Yeah. Very important. Education. President Akufuado has done well with the free SHS. But educational system here, we are tourists. Still, yes. Lar largely. Right. Curriculum has changed. Right. So now we're going by what the Minister of Education is doing now, STEM. Mm -hmm. We need to promote engineering and technology. What I want to do for Ghana is 
when you go to California, Silicon Valley, the moment you mention Silicon Valley, it's technology, city. It's computer programming. <clears throat> when you go to Bangalore in India, mm -hmm. you mention, you go to India and you mention Bangalore, technology city. When you go to China and you mention Shenzhen, technology city, what city in Ghana here that you mention and they will attach or ascribe it to technology? We can find one. So that is what I want to do. How Pre many ministers would Vice have? President has done well with digitization. Yes, yes. We're going to move it a step further where we promote the youth to build softwares and also sell to the rest of the world. What? Uh, how many ministers would you work with? I will not go more than 80. More than 80? I won't go more than 80. Oh, you're being very honest. You're campaigning for elections and you say you're going to have 80 ministers. That's very honest. Usually we don't hear that. We hear 60, 40, 60, 40. No, I won't go. And then they I come say, and they are gone to 90. I, I won't go more than 80. So you, those who ministers say, and deputies. Those who say 60 end up 88. Mm -mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I know what I'm going to do. There will be no two deputy ministers anywhere, no matter the size of the ministry. Even finance? No. Finance, you have one minister of state, one deputy. Not one minister of state, two deputies. Okay. It won't work. Mm. Agreed, which is your primary? Is one deputy. Mm. Everywhere, one deputy. How will you appoint your DCEs? Or do you want them DCE, to be elected? By merit. What does, how will you find the merit? You are sitting in Accra Jubilee House. You don't know all of them. You see, I'm Search an, parties are bringing you names. Uh, I'm an experienced man. Search parties, they will bring the name. But I will engage every man that wants to be DC or MC. One on one. One on one. So All my, of them. Yeah. My and Let me tell you a secret. In 2021, when we won the election for the second time, there were gentlemen and ladies who came to me to go and plead with President Ekufuado to make them MCs and DCs. But during my cross examination, okay, I asked, why do you want to be DC? And one said, <coughs> excuse me, if I'm DC, I'll be able to help the party people, I'll do this. I said, please, where are you going to get the money to help party people? Because the common fund, about two times or three times, you will not get any. It's in IRS. Yeah, you will not get any funding. So are you going to help party people? I want you to tell me that I'm going to create businesses in the constituency, but not to rely on common fund to develop the place. So about three of them, I turned them down. I said, you have no vision for your constituency, and therefore I can't help you. As simple as that. Somebody says I should tell you that the uh, <laughs> city in Ghana for technology is called Kasowa, and he adds a bit of laughter. Robert Coleman from Zoom Lion says that, uh, Kennedy is improving uh, sports infrastructure in Ghana by building more astro steps. He says that I salute Kennedy Japan, uh, say hi to him. Uh, he is a good leader for Ghana. Mikhail, get some messages ready now and let's be wrapping it up over here. Uh, the last question I'll be asking Kennedy uh, Japan is about the Black Stars. Uh, okay, Mikhail, what do you have? So, uh, this message says, good evening, Uncle Paul. You have interviewed Alan and Honorable Ken. When are you bringing my father to the studio, DMB? This is from Ishmael. Now, Emmanuel from Bechile, I believe that is, he says, Paul, please ask Honorable Ken what plans he has for the Volta region. Now, Papa Ahensa from Second D says, uh, please, I want to ask Honorable, what makes him stand tall amongst other aspirants? And would he contest his seat as MP again if he's not successful? Now, Idisa says, this is Ghana's Kagame who turns things around. He's the Donald Trump to turn an alien economy with transfer of business experience into governance. Honorable Ken is the Lee Kuan Yew that would make sure that only the best would deserve to occupy responsible positions. Yes, Honorable Ken has demonstrated that he would not yield to favoritism by allowing the police to deal with his son, only the corrupt shiver when his candidature is mentioned. Now, 
uh, a Akolo Gu Simon says, I watched a video in which the president of is it Malawi strongly rebuking and dismissing can cabinet ministers and heads of government agencies on national television following corruption revelations. And I said to myself, it's only Kennedy at Japan who can do this in recent Ghana. The others behave too indebted to their appointees. And lastly, Joseph Kunamwa says, the Donald Trump of Ghanaian politics will say it as it is, no room for hypocrisy, but Honorable Ken will not endorse that insurrection of Capitol Hill style in Ghana and will concede if he loses an election, unlike Trump. Okay, okay so coming from Ni Oko Ochiwena, this man is a good presidential product, but will the MPP give him the chance? Yes, I decided not to vote this time around, but if it is Kennedy Japan, then I would vote. And lastly, from Odate Boyas, I think that if Honorable Ken wins the MPP nomination, he should pick Honorable Henry Cote as his running mate. And if Vice President Baumia wins, then he should pick Honorable Kennedy as his running mate. My opinion, though. Over to you, Karen. So this is from Victor Tay. He says, considering the current state of Ghana, Ken is the only person trusted to wipe up the country back into shape. Paul, in fact, Ken is fantastic, and I pray and believe his people will vote for him, Ishad Jiga. Kojo Matase is the only presidential candidate who has made impact directly in the lives of Ghanaians in his private life. Ken shall be Ghana's president. Over to you, Naima. Thank you, Karin. Um, this is from Daniel Ayim. Ghanaians in the USA are seriously waiting for Ken to be president before some of them will return home. Ken for president for sure. Watching you live from Virginia, USA. The number speaks volumes. I stand with Ken any day. This is from forget, forget them. Um, Ken, Ken attended at Disalel College for your information. <laughs> and lastly from Dauda Adams, live here in Saudi. Ken, I want to be part of your Ken, I want to be part of your campaign team. <laughs> this is from Johnny Serena Kamba Kabiba. Thank you. Okay, so um, we have to come to the last concluding part of the questions. We have a Black Stars question and uh, a few other things uh, to go. Too many things have been said today. Uh, thank you very much for this interview. Honorable Kennedy Japan is now eight minutes at the top of the hour at midnight, and our social media numbers are cracking up. And thank you very much, all of those watching on social media. Those who like the worship, we'll do the last one before we go. Uh, you know, we'll do the uh, um, so that we'll do that one. Black stars are paid a lot of money. If you are president, will you pay them thousands of dollars to play for Ghana? Yeah. You, you will pay them the money? Yeah, I don't have a problem, yes. Why? You see, we have to encourage these stars to come home and play for us because one, let me give you one example. Those in the foreign teams, they make so much money. Okay? Some of them get about $40,000 a week. Mm -hmm. He comes here, and the whole time that he's going to play for Ghana, they give him $40,000. And Ghana, we are complaining. If this guy hurts himself and cannot play again, he loses $40,000 a week. So I don't mind paying 40000 to them mm -hmm. or whatever money they deserve. It will motivate them to come home and serve their country. So I don't have a problem. Mm -hmm. Then you talk of the locals. Yeah. If a foreign player makes so much and a, 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 a local player is very good and also playing for Ghana, he has to earn the same thing. So I don't have a problem. Mm -hmm. Ghanaians, we should stop complaining that though, especially with the cathedral. Let me branch you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like your, your way. <coughs> you think we should build cathedral? Yes. Your but your answer is yes? Yeah. But we should know how complex mm -hmm. that cathedral is. Mm -hmm. Because I say yes because of tourism. Mm -hmm. And I give you examples. You should always travel, and when you travel, go to other places and see the tourist sites they have. Most Europeans are making money out of Catholic churches. When you go to Spain, that most beautiful one that I have visited is Spain, Barcelona. Mm -hmm. It's called Sagrada Familia. It's a cathedral. Yes, built by Gordon. Mm -hmm. You need to see it. 
you need to see that cathedral. If you can Google mm -hmm. for them to show. Yeah, say that again. They'll Google quite Sagrada well. Familia. Sagrada Familia. Please get it very quickly and put it yeah, on. Sagrada yeah, Sagrada Familia. Mm -hmm. Yes, they would, they, they've heard you. They'll do it. From Intercontinental, my hotel to Sagrada Familia, I paid 12 euros and back 12 euros, which is 24. Taxi drivers made 24 euros mm -hmm. for me going to watch or take a look at Sagrada Familia. I bought a lot of things from there, postcards, artifacts, and all. Now, when you are going to Sagrada Familia, it's in levels. Mm -hmm. Okay? And they have a money bank there that you clock in. If you are going to the first two, three floors, 17 euros, the next floors, then the prices increase. So it's a money maker? Yeah, they make money. When you go to France, Strasbourg, the only business there is the European Parliament. Mm -hmm. Then the mistress of Napoleon. Mm -hmm. Where those days, Napoleon had a mistress. And a very beautiful garden that has become a tourist attraction center. Then you have another cathedral. And you need to see the money they make. They make more money than Equus, uh, European Parliament. I see. Yes. When you go to Hamburg, this same Catholic church, Hamburg is not too big, but they have a tower that you pay 15 euros and go up there. Mm -hmm. And you can see every part of Hamburg. Mm -hmm. Okay? When you go to Cologne, you need to In see. In Germany, yeah. When you go to Rome mm -hmm. and Milan, all these cities so are So your support for the cathedral is not really just <coughs> spiritual. No, econo it's, it's, economic. It's economic and tourism. Mm -hmm. and, and for that reason, we should get it. Right. But, will but it be the cathedral we are trying to build, is it competitive to the ones that you are that mentioning? Is, that is what I, I'm saying. Mm -hmm. That it depends on how sophisticated our cathedral is. Then it can attract all those people, tourists yeah, yeah. to come here. I think they are building it as a tourist attraction because it has many things. It has restaurants, it has oh, halls, yeah. different halls, it has yeah. all kinds of things. Oh, and yeah. they say the presidential inauguration will be carried out there. If they do that, if it's carried out there, government has to pay money. Yeah, to, to rent it. For yeah, the purpose government of has to pay presidential money. Inauguration. It shouldn't be presidential inauguration and it's free. Mm -hmm. That you are not making money. I'm thinking of money, 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 money for the country. Somebody's asking me as we're wrapping up. Since when you're a president, what car would you like to use? I, the, if I'll use my own car. Which is what? I have Mercedes. Why don't you want to use the president's car? I don't know why the president is asking. I think you said something in yeah. another platform. I said I'll buy my own cars. Ah, I see. And I will not use more than five cars. Security, details, and everything. Oh, your convoy will not be more than five? No. But you don't decide that. You can say that here, but the security will decide that. I will decide that. that. I will tell no, the president security. president doesn't decide for the security. security I will tell decide. the security. Why not? They, they will tell you it doesn't work. They will explain to you why you need 20. No. No. Why? I mean, government, I know. When, when some Barack ministers, Obama became president, some he wanted ministers to keep should his, be following you with yeah, that, that you can cut out. Some that, that you can cut out. Be yeah, but no. only the president's own is still going to Yeah, I will tell him five. That's what I want. Eight. No, eight land cruisers is too much. Barack Obama. You see, the, you see them peeping through the window. Ah, Yanka. Or Biden. You know, those things. I want to be a modest president, although I'm capable of doing a lot of things lavishly, but that is not what Ghanaians need. Mm. See, I am coming here to sacrifice for the nation. And I use. Matthew 20. Will you do one term or two terms? Matthew 20, 26. Let Which me quote this and I'll answer you. Mm -hmm. Matthew 20, 26 says that anybody who wants to be a leader must first be a servant yes, correct. of the people. Yes, correct. It's correct. And I want to serve Ghana. Yeah. I don't want to lord myself over Ghanaians. I'm going to be the servant that they know. How many terms would you do? You see, there's... I will answer you by giving you this analogy. There's difference between a leader and a politician. A leader is the one who thinks of development of his country and take bold decision irrespective of the repercussion. A politician is the one who is elected into power and thinks of the next election and therefore is not able to take bold decisions. 
I will take bold decisions. If it's one term, so be it. But the decision I will take within the term, Ghanaians themselves will call me to contest again. But I don't want to put it at the back of my mind that I'm going to go two terms and therefore I'm not going to be disciplined. I will instill discipline in this country. Even if it will cost you the next election? Yes, I will instill discipline. And that is the only way we can move this country. When it comes to spending, it's discipline. When it comes to behavior, it's discipline. When it comes to attitude, it's discipline. Everything is discipline, discipline, discipline. And Ghanaians, change needs us. Mm. I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. We can go on. It's midnight. We can go on and on and on. And that's why, viewers, I told you, I don't know how long this is going to last, but uh, by the grace of God, it's come to an end. What an explosion. What a good interview he's given us. Ken Japan always gives us such a fantastic interview. And I have to commend his team. Your team is very good, I have to say, because the pressure they've given me today. <laughs> uh, let's but, go, let's but, go, let's but, go, let's I go. I want to tell the team that they should not be afraid. They are always scared when I'm going to speak. They were, they were. They and since they're two-year-old, man. You think I don't know what is good for me? Oh, you look younger than 62. I'm 62. Ah, okay. You That's know? nice. Oh, <laughs> yeah, me too full. Oh, yeah, yes, so that. We are ending with that one. No, yeah, no, we better have a book out. Yeah, you know. Yeah, me and Sambe, yeah, ho. Yeah, me and Sambe, yeah, ho. Yeah, me and Sambe, yeah, ho. Say, you can, you can do that. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. Okay, let's go. The last one that uh, Honorable wants to talk about. I'm just appealing to my grassroots supporters. Mm -hmm. Say they should have confidence in me, and I'm going to make sure, even if age is not on their side, there's hope for their children. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they should vote for one of their kind a man who understands them, a man who understands their language, a man who understands their problem. A man who will solve their problems for them. Thank all of you. And I thank Metro TV mm -hmm. and your wonderful crew yes. for giving me opportunity. The young people, they did all the research. Yeah. 
And they did work. Oh, yeah, me So we are wrapping up. Thank you, viewers. Salute. <laughs>